When you enter the time tunnel, almost anything can happen. TV Crazy Man here. In this video, we go back to the 1960s Irwin Allen classic TV series, The Time Tunnel. With amazing goofs and awesome fun facts on the television time travel series, plus a look at the uh, 2002 unaired pilot. The Time Tunnel only ran for one season from 66 to 67, even though it did have strong ratings for a Friday night time slot. There was a big push at the time for ABC. The era series called The Legend of Custer in the Time Tunnel's time slot, effectively canceling the show. Of course, Custer failed miserably. Go figure. The show's main characters were Doug and Tony, who were trapped bouncing around in time thanks to Project TikTok, a top secret government effort to build a time machine. The whole project cost $7.5 billion, definitely not chicken feed in the 1960s. Before we get into more trivia and fun facts, let's take a look at some interesting goose from the time tunnel. You know, time is a very funny thing. If someone were to go back in a time and change something, we might not ever know it. Here's what looks like a goof that one could argue might be an example of a change made in the past right under our noses. At the very beginning of the first episode, Senator Leroy Clark arrives on his plane and gets off another one. When the plane is landing, you see the words Learjet, but when he gets off, the words are completely gone. Vanished as if they were never there to start with. This is the incredible time tunnel in the weeks to come. We're on an expedition to Mars. On the episode One Way to the Moon, during the fight scene, their oxygen tanks change back and forth between cylindrical ones and ones that almost appear as though they were painted flat boxes. And this happens between shots, which is a good thing because the flat oxygen tank was probably a lot easier to land on. That's not gonna hit! It's not the end of the world! On the episode End of the World, we get an idea of how far back the time tunnel actually goes. The shadows of the technicians seem to indicate the tunnel doesn't go back nearly as far as it might appear at first. One of the best episodes and a favorite of mine, The Day the Sky Fell In takes us back to the attack on Pearl Harbor in World War II. Tony confronts his past and he tries to discover what happened to his father during the attack. I know you as well as I know my own son. I am your son. There's one tiny goof when Tony gets caught in a bomb blast. During the blast, when Tony is hit in the face with a piece of wood, you can briefly see a mysterious hand on your right, as if the wood was thrown by hand and not from the blast. Who knows, it may have been another time traveler trying to stop Tony from changing the past. Trial, after which you'll be shot. Aim! I found more evidence there may have been more time travelers involved in this series. In the episode The Last Patrol, this general, who looks suspiciously a lot like Archie Bunker, appears to have possibly have on a wristwatch on underneath his sleeve in 1812. According to my research, wristwatches were primarily worn by queens. It would be years and years later before men wore them as they preferred pocket watches. In the episode Massacre, taking place in 1876 near the Little Bighorn River, time is going a little wonky, as you can hear Tony's punch, when it's quite clear his fist did not connect to the soldier's face. One time anomaly I'm not sure they ever explained was why did Tony and Doug's clothes always go back to what they were originally wearing the day they took off through time. I mean, sometimes their clothes would just change in the middle of the time stream, and then here's an instance where their clothes pop back before they went back into the time stream. Time and space are strange things. In the episode Devil's Island, which takes place in 1895, Tony and Doug are wearing identical prison suits worn by Lost in Space's Dr. Smith and Don West in another galaxy in the future. In the episode, Secret Weapon, there is another example of sound not correlating in sync with what's happening as Tony is speaking, but his lips don't move. Scientists, defectors. How did you get our names? You think Doug noticed that uh, Tony's lips weren't moving? How did you get our names? You think all that time traveling was giving Doug and Tony new abilities? We couldn't begin to guess. 
We're wasting time. I'll contact you from time to time. In the episode, The Revenge of Robin Hood, time repeats itself as Robin and his men shoot the same guy twice in the exact same way. Here's another strange moment where time seems to hiccup. On the episode Kill 2x2, two two, Doug's crowbar can't seem to stay out of his hands. And now, some fun facts. Two American scientists are lost in the swirling maze of past and future ages. Dick Tufeld, the voice of the narrator for the time tunnel, was also the voice of the robot in Lost in Space. Warning! Warning! Advise immediate evasive action! Lee Merriweather, who played Dr. Ann McGregor on the time tunnel, was also Catwoman on the 66 Batman movie. He acted a lot to little sticks with little round circles and faces drawn on them. One would be Jimmy and one would be Bob. You probably remember at least some of Meriwether's many guest appearances, including Star Trek, Mission Impossible, Mannix, F Troop, and her long-running job as Betty Jones on the Barnaby Jones detective show of the 70s, alongside Betty Epson. But did you know she was also Lily Munster in the 1980s on the series The Munsters Today for three seasons? All right, all right. I give up. Robert Colbert, who played Doug Phillips, went on to do mostly guest appearances on other shows. He did 30 appearances over several years on The Young and Restless. Today is retired and uh, does appearances at sci-fi conventions. James Darren, who played Tony Newman, went on to star in another one of my favorite TV shows, T.J. Hooker, with Star Trek's William Shatner. Darren did eight episodes of Star Trek Deep Space Nine as a Frank Sinatra-like hologram. He also directed a lot of shows like The A-Team and Nowhere Man. Whit Bissell, who played the general, did mostly guest appearances on television until 1984. It's a fascinating idea. Can there be somebody floating around somewhere in that thing we call time? He did a couple appearances on The Incredible Hulk. One was as a scientist on the episode Prometheus Part Two in a facility very reminiscent of the time tunnel. I did a, a video on that episode about a year ago. I'll try to put a link to it at the top. Sadly, he passed away back in 1996. Stand by for switching. John Zaremba played Dr. Swain. His biggest parts aside from the time tunnel were as Dr. Harold Jensen on the series Ben Casey and Dr. Harlan Danvers on 13 episodes of Dallas. Looking through his work history, most of his TV appearances were mostly doctors, judges, and a few ministers. He passed away way back in 1986. In 2002, a pilot of a remake of The Time Tunnel was made, but it never aired. It actually had some great ideas with some obviously ridiculous elements thrown in as well, though. The idea I loved was having the show exist in an alternate timeline where there were only 49 states and red lights mean go and green lights mean stop. He had some good actors like David Conrad and Kevin Smith, who sh really he should have played Tony Newman, and Andrea Roth should have played Dr. McGregor instead of a gender swap Tony. If they wanted her to go on missions, then she could have just as well have done that when it made sense. But the pilot has her and another woman go on a mission that involves dressing like soldiers and landing in the middle of combat where in the middle of World War II, where surely soldiers that haven't seen a woman in a very long time would have noticed him from a mile away, and thus caused a huge problem with the space-time continuum. One misstep back there, and our present changes forever. You got that? See? And it was made abundantly clear on that episode, before they went on the mission, that nothing at all should be done to disturb the past, or interact unnecessarily with anyone. But you know, a little tweaking and it could have been an awesome series. But I guess they didn't want to spend the effort. I mean, a lot of great shows in the past started out kind of rocky, got tweaked a little here and there until they made something cool. Somebody at the network or somebody down the line didn't see the potential this series had. On a side note, it's inter interesting that Caven Smith played a robot on Eureka and the time lost monk that appeared in this pilot, played by Neil Grayston, was Fargo on Eureka. Hey, after this video, if you like animation, check out my other channel, Freddy Cat Cartoons. Ooh. 
and thank you for watching this video and please subscribe of course to the tv crazy man channel for classic television facts goofs and uh, whatnot um and have a great day need brains oh, oh, brains. oh. oh tasty kitty cat brains oh. Oh. resistance is impossible <laughs>